Hello everybody, it's Chad from Stick's Blog. I'm Stick, and today I want to do a video and talk about items that I typically carry with me when I go on a backpacking trip. Now a lot of times uh, on my videos and stuff that I do, I go into a lot of detail as far as the items that I put into my backpack, and sometimes I'll talk about um, how something might be a, a uh, base pack weight or something might be a carried weight or something might even be a worn weight. Um, but today I want to take the time and just kind of go over a couple of things that I typically always have with me when I go on a backpacking trip that's either being worn or kind of in my pockets being carried. And uh, some of the items, the reason that I have them in my pockets rather than in my backpack is simply because if for some reason I was to lose my backpack or something like that, these are some of the essential items that uh, I would like to have on me, um, even if I did you know, where to happen to lose my pack for some reason or another. Um, so what I want to do is I just got a couple of things laid out here before me. I'm going to reposition the camera in just a second so you can kind of see the stuff on the table just a little bit better. And it's not a whole lot of stuff because you got to remember I am carrying this stuff in my uh, my pockets or as you'll see there's uh, two items I actually wear. But uh, so I don't like to weigh my pockets down or anything like that. But like I said there are a couple of items that have a lot of uh, good handy uh, features to them that is useful to have just in case I was to come to a point where I lost my pack for some reason or another. So anyway, I'm just going to uh, reposition this camera and I'll talk about these items. So hang on just a second. Okay, so as you can see, like I said, there's not a uh, whole lot of items I have here, but um, some of the items I do have, like I said, are kind of essential and I like to have them with me. Um, so didn't, should anything happen to my backpack. So first off, I'll start with uh, two items that I have that I typically wear. Um, one of them is my watch. Um, now this isn't anything fancy. This is a high gear Axio Max watch. Uh, to be honest with you, I kind of wish I wouldn't have spent the money on it. It was $150 when I bought it. And it works fairly well, I guess. But there's a couple of things I have issues with it about. Um, one is the buttons when I'm wearing it. Somehow these buttons manage to get pressed uh, fairly easy. So I'll go to look at it. And when I'm looking at it, I'm not on the screen that I, I, I had left it on. So uh, that's one dislike I have about it. And the other one is maybe it's just uh, watches in general, but the biggest reason that I wanted this watch was for the altimeter. And the reason I wanted it for the altimeter is because I like to, uh, I like to go by elevation profiles whenever I'm on trails that uh, are uh, ma well maintained, such as the Appalachian Trail, but I like to go by profi profile elevations. And what I'd like to do is just simply look at my watch and see what elevation I'm at. And, you know, as I go throughout the day, I kind of just keep up with uh, where I've come across and also go by the signs that I, I meet. And that way I can kind of look at these maps and tell exactly or pretty close to where I am, as long as I'm still on the trail I'm supposed to be on. This has worked fairly well, um, but one thing I found is uh, that if there's a lot of, if there's, if there's a storm or something coming in, that a lot of times the uh, altitude and the barometric pressure and all that stuff, I can't really rely on it too well. I may reset it at every road sign or crossing or, or point that I come to that I know I'm on the map, but then it's, it's changed again. So uh, anyway, uh, it does have an alarm. Of course, I can tell my time and all that good jazz, but I like, I like having the watch simply for the altimeter, and I'll continue to wear it just simply because it does work at times, and other times uh, it doesn't. And I've kind of gotten used to knowing when and when it does, when it does, and when it doesn't work so well. So, uh, but anyway, so uh, that's the watch that I use, and of course, like I said, it does have an alarm, so that may be handy on those mornings, uh, like on the uh, one of the recent trips I went on when we needed to get up at four o'clock in the morning. I could just set my watch for the alarm. So, and then since I already talked about it, this is just a map. I usually keep the map in my uh, front pocket. Um, that way I can just kind of reach in there, pull it out, look at it. I ain't got to worry about getting in my pack or anything like that. But I also, just in case, like I said, if my pack uh, happens to uh, come up missing, uh, I've still got my map. And like I said, as long as I stay on the trail, um, I'll kind of know what to expect. Now this isn't a big detailed topographic map or anything like that. Um, this is just one that I typically use on the Appalachian Trail when I head out that way. So of course that's going to vary. Um, also, uh, just going back to things I wear, I've kind of started recently, if you'll notice you keep up on my YouTube videos or my blog, you'll see that uh, I've kind of gotten in the habit of using a survival bracelet. 
Now, people get a little confused, I think, and I did too, at uh, the term survival and survival bracelet. This, I'm not going to say it's not going to save my life, but um, that's not exactly what I'm using it for. Um, you, really what I'm using this for is if I need a piece of cord or if I need a shackle or a buckle or something because something happens and I just happen to need it, um, I have some extra cord and that's the only reason that I use it. Uh, I started using it as a bracelet. I used to carry some extra cord in my backpack, um, but the grand weenie in me said that, you know what, if I could start wearing it on my arm as a bracelet, I could take that weight out of my pack and uh, save, you know, depending on the cord I carry, you know, up to an ounce of weight in my backpack. And that's not anything that I'm going to notice on my back, but it satisfies the gear gram, or the gear, gear weenie in me. The gram weenie, that's it. So anyway, I've uh, taken to wearing these and I really like them. So uh, I'll continue to wear these until I feel that the need changes. Next, uh, I keep in one of my cargo pockets. Typically, I'm not going to say typically, always, I, uh, I prefer to wear a pair of Columbia Silver Ridge uh, zip-off convertible pants. And I really like them. Um, I hardly ever zip off the bottom legs, but I love them. Uh, the pants fit me well, and I just like them. Uh, that's my preference. So what I'll usually do is I'll usually put this little bag of different items in either my left or my right, didn't really matter, uh, cargo pants pocket. And all I have in here is I have some uh, Germex, I have some uh, Carmex, um, I have a little bottle of bleach, and I have a little bottle of Dr. Bronner's. And these are just nice things to kind of have handy. If I come across to a stream or something and I think, you know, hey, I want to uh, kind of wash my hands or wash my head or something like that, I got some Dr. Bronner's in there. If I have to go to the bathroom, I got my Germex close, I ain't got to deal with it. If there's a lot of wind or it's cold and my lips are chapped, I've got my Carmex right there. And then uh, it bleach, you know, if I feel like I need to treat my water or something like that, if something were to happen to my filter, um, I've got some bleach. But usually I use that bleach. I've started uh, doing laundry on the trail and that's what I use it for. But it's a liquid and it's in a bottle so I just throw it in here. It doesn't really take up extra room as you can see. Uh, but anyway, that's usually what I have in my left pocket. And it, it is kind of bulk, bulky, I'll admit, but to be honest, I don't notice it in my pants pocket at all. So if it bothered me, I wouldn't carry it, but it doesn't bother me so I do carry it. Um, I usually keep just a, uh, a towel so I can kind of wipe my face and stuff off with. And I've been using these light load towels is what I've been using lately. Uh, looking around for some other ones, but I'm going to keep on these light load towels until I come up with something else that'll work a little better. And I just usually keep this in my front pants pocket so I can just reach in, pull it out, wipe my face, or do whatever. Uh, you know, it's just a, a multi-purpose kind of daily cleansing towel. Um, and then last um, is this, this here. Now this is a multitude of things, as you can see here. And this is bulky. Um, Essentially, this is a lanyard. I made out of some of the uh, glow wire that I got from Lawson Klein. I don't have it tied in a knot. All I did was took this little clamp and I clamped the ends of it together. That way, if I decide to wear this around my neck, um, which I'm going to tell you right now I don't do, but if I decided to do it, and for some reason this got caught on something, um, this little clip would just break apart and it wouldn't choke me or you know shouldn't hurt my neck or anything like that. But also, uh, of course, I've got about two feet of this cord here, so this is just a little bit of extra spare cord just in case something were to happen while I was on the trail and I needed just a little short piece of cord, I could sacrifice this cord here rather than having to do undo this entire bracelet here. So I've got some good cord and that is the glow wire, so um, it, it, this stuff really does glow in the dark when any, you know even just a little bit of light hits it. Uh, this thing will really light up. So. Um, that could be a good little multi-purpose piece of cord for just whatever I need it. But uh, right now, what I have it is uh, just kind of holding all these few items together. Now I'll go ahead and say I don't wear this, like I said, around my neck. Usually what I'll do is just kind of, uh, I'll actually just kind of loop this cord up and just kind of tie it in a little knot and then just stick all this in the other cargo pants pocket that uh, opposite of this. Um, now again, uh, I said this doesn't bother me, and it's true, it doesn't bother me, and I've also found that this doesn't bother me. I don't know, maybe it's the way the pants pockets are, I don't know. All I know is it doesn't bother me. Um, and also, you know, of course, I always have this. Now a few of the other items that I have on here, first off, is just a little mini compass, and then of course it has a little thermometer gauge on it there, and then of course on back it's got some, uh, wind, um, 
uh, wind chill factors, stuff like that. Just little information. That's not neat right there, but you know, the compass came in this, so I just left it in there. I could bust that little compass out, and I actually thought about gluing it to the back of my whistle here, but I thought, you know, that's probably protecting it, so I'll just leave it in there. Next, I have a little photon, uh, micro photon light. And this little light, I love it. To be honest, it's a very awesome light. It's, uh, it's actually gotten me out of the woods one night whenever my uh, Petzl E-Light really crapped out on me. And uh, since then, I haven't used my E-Light. Um, but this thing right here, I love it. It's got a button on the top, push. The light comes on, or if you want to. Um, I don't know if you can see that little uh, switch right there on the top. But you just pull it back and the light will stay on. So uh, that makes it really handy. Uh, and I just have that on there. Next I have, this is just an REI whistle. I got it from REI. It's not P-less, it does have a P down in there. So in cold weather, that might not be the best whistle to have. But it is very loud. I haven't you know, done a decibel test or anything like that on it. Um, but it's a very loud whistle. And uh, you know, I have that on me always. And uh, this is a new item that I just got. Up until this point, I've been carrying a uh, Light My Fire Scout model uh, fire steel. And recently, I just ordered this from uh, Nun Attack, not Nun Attack, uh, X Attack. And uh, all it is, it's a Poly Strike uh, Fire Steel. And uh, cool thing about these, they are made in the USA, 100% made in the USA. And it's just a little fire steel. It comes with a little striker uh, that just fits right inside the uh, handle, uh, so it's not dangling extra. And then this just got the little striker, and let's see if it'll. Make some good strikes there. And the uh, neat thing about this is, is I did replace it and I'm, I wasn't going to get in the weights a whole lot and I still won't. But I will say that this right here weighs 0.5 ounces for this striker with the, uh, the striker with the rod. Whereas just the rod that I had on my, uh, like my fire model weighed 0.7 ounces. So I actually saved 0.2 ounces going with this. And to be honest, I wanted one of the uh, nano strikers, but they were just a little bit too expensive for my blood. Um, and then last, I have my little K-Bar Mini Dozier. See here, it's not got the serrated edge, it's just a straight edge on the, uh, the knife here. But it's, uh, it's, you know, it's done everything that I've absolutely needed it to do. Um, you know, I've cut string, I've cut food, or I've cut packages or something like that open. Uh, it is big enough for me to just take a little piece of wood and kind of whittle some wood to get some uh, tinder or some shavings. So I have some fire tender. Um, you know, it's not a big, strong knife. I can't, you know, um, baton with it or anything like that. But it's done everything I needed to do, and it doesn't hardly weigh anything. Um, it's got a locking handle or a locking blade on it, and it's it's done everything I needed to do. So I'm really really happy with that. I have thought about taking off the uh, the little uh, clip here just to save a little extra weight, but I figure that uh, if for some reason I ever needed to take this lanyard apart with all these other items, um, at least that way I can just clamp that, just clip it in my pocket, kind of keep up with it like that. So that's everything uh, that I have. And if you'll notice too, three of these main items here are bright orange. Um, used to, I would get everything black, but I found that these little items, if they ever come apart or they're not all, all kept together, Sometimes they're easy to misplace. So I've started little items like this. I've uh, started getting bright colors, so it would be, uh, I would, you know, be harder for me to leave them behind. I'm not gonna say I would would not ever leave them behind, but it would make it uh, a little bit harder for me to miss them if I was to walk off without them. But anyway, uh, these are some of the items that I do always carry in my pants pockets, or uh, in some cases I wear on my wrist. Uh, of course, some of the other items I have is like my trekking poles, but you know, that's a given. Of course, there's nowhere else that you're going to be able to put those. Um, but anyway, these are just some basic items that I carry. I like to know that I have these particular items on me at all times, whether my pack's on my back or not. Um, and like I said, it just is something that kind of works for me. So uh, I appreciate you watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them below. Uh, as well, if you'd like, uh, feel free to post below some of the items that you may carry. Uh, in your own pockets or on your hands or, or on your wrist, excuse me. Um, and just feel free to uh, let me know some of the things that you do. And until then, uh, till later. Talk to you later. I think I already said that.